Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. Wait, wait, maybe. Now, the Attorney General of New York uh, recently took action to dissolve the NRA. The NRA. All right, so now let me give you some details, right? So now New York did an investigation, uh, and they found evidence that the NRA itself happens to be filled with fraud and abuse. Uh, so now Attorney General Letitia James, uh, who uh, filed this lawsuit, uh, said that she found financial misconduct in the millions of dollars and that it contributed to a loss of more than $64 million in a three-year period uh, for the organization. You know, a lot of that comes from members' dues, right? Uh, as well as charitable funds uh, from big donors. Uh, and so that money, well, they alleged that a lot of that money ended up going right into the pockets of NRA executives. Now, I, I'm going to show you the press conference here when uh, Le that Letitia James had, um, had, uh, had earlier today where she announced this lawsuit. Take a look. Just a few minutes ago, my office filed a lawsuit against the National Rifle Association to dissolve the organization in its entirety for years of self-dealing and illegal conduct that violate New York's charities law and undermine its own mission. For years, the NRA diverted millions and millions of dollars away from its charitable mission for personal use by senior leadership to award contracts to the financial gain of close associates and family and appeared to dole out lucrative no-show contracts to former employees in order to buy their silence and continued loyalty. This lawsuit specifically charges the NRA as a whole in addition to four individual defendants. All right, so now that, that's Letitia James. So now I'm going to get into uh, at least one of the defendants here. Uh, and, well, I'll, I'll give you all the names, actually. Uh, and so, as you heard here, James complaint names the National Rifle Association as a whole, but names four current and former NRA executives. So you've got Executive Vice President Wayne LaPierre, uh, who's been named in the suit, General Counsel John Frazier, former Chief Financial Officer Woody Phillips, and former Chief of Staff Joshua Powell. It also lists dozens of examples of alleged financial mis malfeasance, including the use of NRA money for vacations, private jets, expensive meals. Uh, let's see. There's uh, a lot more. Uh, for example, um, you've got LaPierre himself, who was accused of using charitable funds for personal gain, including a post-employment contract valued at more than $17 million that was not approved by the NRA's board of directors. The lawsuit also claims that LaPierre re received more than $1.2 million in expense reimbursements over four years, which included gifts for friends, travel expenses, and memberships at golf clubs and hotels. Gee, I wonder if Mar-a-Lago is on there. Hmm. It also alleges that LaPierre spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on private plane trips, including for extended family when he was not present, traveled to Africa with his wife on a safari gifted by a vendor, and spent more than $3.6 million on luxury black car services and travel consultants in the past few years. And also they alleged that people who attempted to blow the whistle on this behavior were retaliated against by LaPierre. So that's just LaPierre. And again, the rest have similar charges of self-dealing. So now in addition to dissolving the organization in its entirety, the lawsuit also asks the court to order LaPierre and other current and former executives to pay back unlawful profits and also seeks to prevent the four named individuals from ever serving on the board of a charity in New York. That sounds a lot like what happened with Donald Trump. So, wow. Uh, again, a lot of this money, it did come from people who 
profess to believe in protecting the Second Amendment. And that's why they give the NRA money. And well, uh, unfortunately for them, the NRA does not represent gun owners. No. It, and, and let me give you some examples of it, right? So now, remember Philando Castile. Philando Castile uh, was a man who was shot by the police. He was a legal gun owner. Uh, he was not reaching for his weapon. He was in a normal traffic stop. Uh, and he said, I have a weapon here. I have a weapon. I'm not going to reach for it. I'm going to give you what you asked for, license and registration, you know, uh, and my information, my personal information. Please don't kill me. Well, he was killed anyway, shot and killed during a routine police stop. Another example of this uh, is Kenneth Walker. Now, Kenneth Walker was a boyfriend of the late Brianna Taylor. Now, Kenneth Walker was a legal gun owner and ended up using his firearm against unmarked plainclothes police officers who barged in to the apartment and murdered his girlfriend, shot her eight times for no reason after they had the man in, in custody uh, that they were actually looking for. And there were no drugs in that house. So now those are just two examples uh, now, what do those examples have in common? Oh, oh, right. They're black people. Hmm. But wait, I, I thought the NRA was supposed to go against big government and big government overreach. And, and, and you know, well, I mean, you can't uh, get bigger government than the, you know, police just firing in indiscriminately into your apartment 20 times. I mean, that's pretty big. That's pretty bad, right? That's that's definitely abuse by a tyrannical government. What happened, NRA? Why did you not back them? Because they don't back legal gun owners. They just don't. The NRA did not come to their defense at all because they only represent one kind of gun owner, white conservatives. When it comes to black leftists who own guns, Oh, hell no. They do not represent black gun owners. Um, look, they don't like the gun rights of any leftist. And in addition, they only serve the gun manufacturers. Uh, and, you know, they're, they, what they do is that they push fear on people. Uh, whenever Democrat, any Democrat gets into office and even mentions any sort of modest measure of gun control, uh, they push that fear. Right. And they say, oh, the Democrats are coming for your guns. They're going to take your guns. Big government coming for your guns. When, by the way, the ironic uh, thing here is Donald Trump also said we should probably take people's guns. It took a sit down with LaPierre for Trump to say, oh, 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 right. No, uh, boy. Uh, yeah, I guess we won't take their guns. Uh, I love the Second Amendment. Isn't the Second Amendment great? I mean, the money from LaPierre and, and the NRA is fantastic, but, you know, and, and by the way, they donated millions of dollars to help Donald Trump get elected. So that's what they do also with a lot of their money is they give to conservative politicians. Uh, so now the thing is, once Donald Trump got into office, they didn't have scary black men in office to, you know, try to scare people into, oh, my God, black Democrats coming for my guns, right? So sales for the NRA went way down and the NRA itself ran out of money for that and other reasons. Uh, now, a secret recording of the NRA board meeting obtained by NPR back in April showed LaPierre telling the audience that the NRA's legal troubles have cost the organization around $100 million. He said the cost that we bore was probably $100 million hit lost in lost revenue and real cost to the association in 2018 and 2019. LaPierre said, uh, according to a recording by a source in the room, and he said, I mean, that's huge. Uh, hey, look, that is a lot of money, right? Uh, now, much of this has to do with their legal troubles, facing congressional inquiries and investigations by multiple state attorneys general, as well as internal whistleblower complaints, uh, some of which LaPierre has been accused of retaliating uh, for. Uh, and the NRA's finances have sagged under the burden of legal costs. 
in the ongoing litigation between the NRA and Ackerman McQueen, its former public relations firm. A brief filed by the firm on April 15th indicates its belief that the NRA has paid its outside legal counsel over $54 million in the past two years. So, I mean, they're not doing well. They're not doing well at all. Uh, so now, here's the thing. If you're if you're a rabid right-winger uh, and you're like, oh, Second Amendment, there are other gun rights organizations, right? And those organizations might actually not screw you out of money and may actually care about the Second Amendment. The NRA has never backed you, at least not since the 80s, I believe, early 80s, maybe late 70s, when they realized, oh, it's actually more profitable to uh, be a, a tool of the gun manufacturers so they can sell more guns. Again, originally, well, maybe not originally, but at some point, the message about the NRA was, hey, look, uh, they just want to teach you gun safety and protect your right to bear arms. Uh, and, well, they, do, they don't do that anymore. Again, they're all about ginning up fear to try to sell more guns. And that's what this is. Uh, and so not to mention, by the way, uh, putting out crazy uh, things like NRA TV, right? You guys remember that, where they just have crazy after crazy on telling you how your gun rights are under assault, even though we have more gun rights than we've ever had before. And consequently, more school shootings than any other country in the modern world. Uh, and so it's actually much more dangerous uh, than a lot of other countries that we would call third world uh, with our gun violence. And, and so, yeah, that, that was what they brought to the table as well. Now, if they do get dissolved, well, there's a couple of good things from it, right? Uh, for one, they're not going to be able to donate millions of dollars to right-wing candidates. Oh, darn. Fiddlesticks, right? That sucks. Uh, and goodbye, NRTV. Uh, and their ridiculous fear-mongering bullshit, uh, and their ability to help sell guns on behalf of gun manufacturers. That said, are they actually going to get dissolved? That's a good question, right? Again, they had a lot of money. They've got money troubles now. Uh, and so they're, I believe their influence has always been exaggerated, right? I mean, they're actually a fairly small organization uh, and hadn't actually given, like, yes, they give money to politicians, but they never really gave tons and tons and tons as much, uh, as much as, you know, what we would think that their influence really was. So there is a chance that they might not survive this. Uh, and if they do, well, it may not last much longer afterwards due to the weight of all the things that are actually against it. Uh, and so to that, I say good riddance, to an awful, awful organization. Sorry, not sorry.